Hi everyone, my name is Ya Pengye. I'm from Purdue University. Today, I'm going to present our work, NetPly, a probabilistic network trace-based protocol reverse engineering technique. As we know, network protocol is a crucial component in the communication systems and applications. Many security analysis require precise modeling of the network protocol. For example, bug detection, malware analysis, and IoT security. However, these applications often use their own undocumented communication protocols, which require reverse engineering first. Existing techniques fall into two main categories, depend on different inputs, that is network traces or program binaries. In many practical scenarios, program binaries are often unavailable, packed or obfuscated. Therefore, in this work, we focus on using network traces, which could be acquired by eavesdropping on the network. Let's look at an example trace of DMP3. Each row in, contains a message. The plain messages are from the client and the shaded message are from the server. The message data is composed of several fields. The bytes in bold are a semantic field called the keyword, which denotes the message type. The message type is defined by the specification and unknown in the trace. Each message type has its own format, which defines the syntax of the, this type. The main goal of the protocol reverse engineering is to infer protocol's syntax and the semantics. The first step is to group messages of the same type into a cluster. The clustering results determine the accuracy of further format and state machine inference. As existing works usually consider messages from different directions separated, we use messages from the client as an example. Here, the ideal clustering result is to get two clusters according to their message types, denoted by values 82 and 81. Next, we will discuss existing techniques and our technique conduct uh, clustering with the help of this example. There are two main existing techniques. The first is alignment-based clustering. The state of the other tool is net zone. It first uses the pairwise sequence alignment algorithms to align each pair of messages. Then it recursively group messages based on the similarity scores computed from the alignment results. The alignment-based clustering methods work on assumption that messages are, are of the same type if they have similar sequences of values. However, this is not true all the time. For example, let's look at the alignment results of the two pairs. The red bytes are the same value aligned together. We can see that the pair of the same byte has no similarity than pair of different types. Based on this weak assumption, it generates two clusters and both contain messages of different types. Another limitation is that it is, sens it is sensitive to a threshold of similarity scores to decide which clusters should be merged together and different protocols should use different values. The second method is token-based clustering. The representative is discoverer. It first tokenizes messages based on the value of each byte to reduce variations. Token B denotes a binary byte and the T denotes a text string. Then it conducts initial clustering by the token, token type patterns. In this example, it observes two, two different token patterns and produces two initial clusters. Since messages of different types may have the same token patterns, discoverer further divides initial clusters into subclusters by identifying format distinguisher tokens. For example, in the first initial cluster, the token B in red contains only two different values, 82 and 81, which is likely denoting two different types. Thus, discoverer generates two subclusters by the value of this token. It is the same for the second initial cluster. Although there is only one type in each cluster, each ground truth type denoted by the colors is suboptimally divided into two smaller types. This is because in binary protocols, most bytes are considered as individual tokens and little structural information is exposed. Also, there could be multiple distinguisher tokens, which leads to excessive clusters. We can see that these existing techniques rely on ad hoc rules, which may not hold in many cases. 
They do not model such uncertainty and hence often yield incorrect and redundant clusters. Based on this, we have several key insights for our work. First, when a client or a server receives a message, it determines the type only by the keyword. Thus, if we can infer the, keyword, the field denoting the keyword, we would obtain the ideal clustering results. Second, we can take a better advantage of network traces, which uh, are the only input for trace-based methods. Existing works only analyze message data from one side. However, we could observe more hints if we consider traces from both sides. For example, we can see that all the unsolicited response messages from the client always trigger the confirmed messages from the server as a response, which means clusters on the two sides have some correspondence. These additional hints could be used to improve the and validate cluster, clustering results. Another insight is to assign a prior ab ab a probability to each hint denoting its uncertainty instead of making a simple deterministic call and aggregate these hints with probabilistic inference. Based on these insights, we develop a netply, a probabilistic network trace based protocol reverse engineering technique. This is a system design of netply. In the stage of pre-processing, we extract useful information and message data from the input trace. Then we identify a set of fields that are candidates for keywords and use a probabilistic method to infer which fields are most likely the true keywords. With the keyword fields identified, messages of the same type can be grouped together. The alignment and the clustering are performed iteratively to improve the results. Finally, format inference and state machine inference could be conducted based on the generated clusters. Next, I will give details of the two major stages, the uh, keyword field candidate generation and the probabilistic keyword identification. The first step is to identify a set of candidates for keywords. Message data is composed of multiple fields. For complex protocols, messages may have different structures and some fields may have a variable length, which makes a field appear at different positions in different messages. Intuitively, the idea is to use alignment algorithms. We leverage multiple sequence alignment or MSA, which is an extension of pairwise alignment in bioinformatics and could align all sequences at a time. Progressive methods and iterative refinement could be used to reduce computational complexity and improve accuracy. This is the result after MSA. Gaps are inserted into the variable length fields in order to demonstrate alignment results. Based on it, we partition message data into fields in a very conservative way. First, we consider each aligned byte as a single unit field which could be marked as static if all message data have the same value, otherwise dynamic. Then consecutive static unit fields are merged to a large unit field. For example, field 0, 2, and 9 are static unit fields, and the others are dynamic. The compositions of a multiple unit fields are called compound fields. A field in the real specification could be a unit field or a compound field. So we generate a list of keyword candidates, including all the unit fields and the compound fields that are shorter than a threshold, for example, 10 bytes. Specifically, field seven is a true keyword defined by the specification. Given the list of keyword candidates, we now use a probabilistic method to infer which fields are most likely the keywords. First, for each field, we assume that it is a keyword and introduce a random Boolean variable to denote this assumption. Next, we can group messages into different clusters by the field. If the keyword assumption is true, that is, the messages in a cluster are indeed of the same type, we should have the following observations from the generated clusters. The first observation is message similarity. Messages in the same cluster should be more similar than messages in different clusters. We also introduce a random variable to denote this observation. However, this observation may not have may have some uncertainty, as we discussed. For example, some messages in the cluster satisfy it, and some may not. 
Thus, we introduce an observation constraint to model this uncertainty. The observation constraint associates the random variable M with a prior probability, which means that MJ has the prior probability of uh, PMJ to be true. The value of PMJ is computed based on the messages in the cluster and may vary a lot among different clusters. In the paper, we provide details on how to compute it. Another kind of uncertainty lies between the observation and the assumption Ki. That is, two clusters may not demonstrate their uh, such observation, and the observation does not necessarily imply true clustering year. Thus, we also introduce two implication constraints reg regulated by implication probabilities, denoting the confidence of the observation. The first implication constraint denotes that if field FI is the keyword, there is a PM error chance that the message similarity is observed. The second constraint represents the op opposite direction of reasoning. Intuitively, the two constraints describe the uncertainty of the relations between Ki and MJ. Unlike the prior probabilities, existing literature of probability inference typically use predefined values for implication probabilities. And it shows that inference results are usually not sensitive to these values due to the iterative nature of inference algorithm. We follow the same practice here. Besides message similarity, we also consider some, some other observations. For example, remote company, which means for cluster from one side, there are corresponding messages from the other side should uh, also belong to a same cluster as we discussed in the insights. Stretch coherence constraints state that a message of the same time shares a similar field structure. We also consider the dimension of the clustering results which is a global observation and not specific to a cluster. Similarly, we can define their observation constraints and the implication constraints. After having these random variables and the constraints, we conduct a probabilistic inference to consider them together. First, we translate these constraints to probabilistic functions. Then the conjunction of all the constraints can be denoted as a product of all the functions. Our interest is the uh, marginal probability of the assumption K in the joint probability function. The, this value represents the probability that the candidate field is the keyword and the random variable with the largest uh, probability indicates the most likely keyword. We leverage a general graph model called a uh, factor graph to represent all probabilistic functions and conduct efficient computation. For evaluation, we conducted a set of experiments. First, we compare our method with two state-of-the-art tools, NetZorb and Discover, on 10 different protocols. Most of these protocols are binary protocols, which are sort of more difficult to cluster than text protocols. We use common metrics for clustering performance evaluation, which are called homogeneity and completeness. Homogeneity means that each cluster contains only messages of a single byte while completeness means all messages of a given type are assigned to the same cluster. Both are the larger the better. We can see that since NetPly recognizes uh, keywords correctly, both metrics are 100% for almost all protocols, substantially outperforms NetZorb and Discover. We also show the stability of NetPly by evaluation all data sets of different sizes and the benefits of our clustering results in downstream format and state machine inference. As existing works usually focus on uh, well-known application layer protocols to validate the generality, we also evaluate on eight physical layer protocols and apply NetPly to six real IoT devices to show that the inferred message format could generate a valid message for communication. Due to time limitation, we omit the detailed results of these evaluations. So in conclusion, we propose a novel probabilistic network trace-based protocol reverse engineering technique. We use a multiple sequence alignment to generate a keyword field candidates and formulate the keyword identification as, as a probabilistic inference problem. Our experiment shows that our technique outperforms the state of the art and uh, validates its uh, generality. It's the end of my presentation. Thank you.